Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be doing this video because um, I haven't talked to you guys in a while and since I've done my last video, I got married. So Antero and I got married April 23rd um, in Rio Grande, Puerto Rico. I had a destination wedding. It was beautiful. I can't believe it's like already going to be a month that we've been married. But I've gotten so much love and congratulation messages from you guys. So thank you so much. So I really wanted to make a video. Um, at first I was going to do a blog post, but I thought a video would just be a lot easier for me to just get all this information out there because I got a lot of questions and personal emails sent to me about tips on how to plan a destination wedding. People that are having one or interested in having one, they wanted to know um, if I have any advice and tips or how I did mine. So I wanted to make a video on some destination wedding tips that I can give you guys, some mistakes I made to hopefully prevent you guys from making the same mistakes. I really wanted to give some tips and my experience on planning a destination wedding. The question is, why choose a destination wedding? So um, there was a few reasons. Number one was the cost. For us, we were paying for our own wedding, so we were saving, and I didn't want to. I didn't want our wedding to become a huge financial burden for the two of us. So we created a number, and in our in my mind, I was like, okay, I don't want to spend more than twelve thousand dollars. So I, you know, my family lives in upstate New York, so we checked out vendors about two years ago in upstate New York. I went to so many different vendors. Just after hearing their numbers and calculating, I just knew that I was never gonna hit that number and get what I wanted. So I started reading a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, reviews and a couple blogs in regards of destination wedding. So Ontario and I took a vacation to Puerto Rico about two years ago and I said, you know what, I'm gonna use this chance to go to Puerto Rico. We're gonna just take a half a day and we're gonna visit a ton of vendors. So what I did was a couple months before our trip, I contacted a lot of vendors after doing research about good uh, wedding reviews of places to get married in Puerto Rico. So the first thing you wanna also think about if you decide to do a destination wedding is what type of wedding do you want? Do you want it to be a cultural wedding where you know it's more of a place of history and a cultural background in the place that you're trying to get married or do you want to do a more resort beachy type wedding I wanted my wedding to feel like Puerto Rico and the culture Ontario and I both are uh, Puerto Rican heritage both of our parents were born and raised in Puerto Rico and although him and I were born in the United States I just really wanted to embrace uh, our culture so I already knocked that out I did not want a beach wedding so I didn't look for any hotels or anything that you know really focus on having a you know by the beach wedding so I looked at things in Viejo San Juan, which is Old San Juan. I looked in places in Rio Grande and places near El Junque. And um, I narrowed it down to three places. I went to Hotel El Convento, which is in Viejo San Juan, Casa de España, which is in San Juan, and um, Hacienda Siesta um, de Alegre, which is in Rio Grande. So I went to all of those venues, but the minute we went to the Hacienda, there was something about that place that just tugged in my heart. I knew from the moment that I we walked the tour um, with the wedding planner there, I was like, this is where I'm getting married. So I booked the Hacienda probably a year in advance of our wedding. I'm not sure if that's the proper timeline. I just know that I... Um, I'm an overly cautious person. I'm very organized. So I just wanted to give myself enough time because again, we were paying for our own wedding. I just wanted to make sure that we had enough time to save uh, a lot of money so that we can have our dream wedding. Once I have the place and the venue that I wanted to get married, the next thing that I wanted to do was to plan a wedding coordinator. So when you plan a wedding coordinator, you have two options. You can have a full uh, a full-time wedding coordinator which in their packages means you have them for the full length of your wedding planning or about maybe six months of your wedding planning so they go they help you a lot with picking out vendors and setting up your contracts and your deadlines and your decor and all that stuff um, since I'm very hands-on and controlling I knew that that wasn't 
going to be a good idea because I probably wouldn't allow a wedding corner to take that much control of my wedding. So I chose uh, a part-time wedding coordinator, which her services was um, about two months until the day of our wedding. She helped me out to make sure that I was um, on the right track when it comes to scheduling um, my, you know, scheduling all our vendors, make sure I had all my vendors. She just wanted to help out with our contracts, make sure everyone was paid. We went over, uh, the wedding day schedule, the timeline, um, just little nuances like that throughout your wedding day. And she was awesome. I worked with Tatiana Ramos, which her company is called Mia Eventos. She, I would refer her to anybody. She was amazing to work for. She was such a gem. So that's my second step I would advise you guys is to get a wedding coordinator when you're having a destination wedding. It is a huge, huge burden off your back. You have no idea. They are worth the money. Um, and then, you know, the day of your wedding, the day before, I mean, you just, I just gave her all of my DIY decorations or anything that I made that I had to bring to Puerto Rico with me. I gave it to her the day before. She ran the rehearsal. Um, and you know, she just made sure that everything ran that the day of flawlessly. She was always there for me if I needed anything down to getting ready, down to carrying my train, down to helping me, you know, get in my spot for pictures, down to the flow of the wedding. I mean, she took care of everything, which is, it was just great. Cause I can't imagine having a destination wedding and not have a wedding coordinator. Like I would be in charge of when we had to cut the cake and when we do that. No, 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 no. She, she was really awesome. So the next thing is outside vendors. So if you do what I did, which you book a place like the Hacienda, um, you, have to, you have to book all your outside vendors. So we, I had to find a caterer, I had to find a florist, I had to find a DJ. Um, so you just, I really recommend going on websites like weddingwire.com or thenot.com. There's just so many people that have been married that just provide awesome reviews to really help you choose and narrow down um, the vendors. The person that I booked down there was the caterer. So to me, it was very important to have the venue, a coordinator, and then my food. So we hired a caterer. Uh, her name's Rebecca Molina, and she works with Food Design Inc amazing they were in our price range and the food was spectacular excuse me i wanted to make sure that at my wedding we had authentic puerto rican food um i just again i just really wanted to embrace our culture so we had rice and beans we had chicken we had uh pork we had you know yuca we had plantains we had just you know just puerto rican food that's just what i wanted another thing you want to keep in mind is when you uh, choose a destination wedding that you want to do your research on the weather and you cover everything you want to cover hurricane season uh, when's the rainiest the rainiest months um, the highest tourist uh, time of year um, their slowest season mosquito season I mean that's huge so with us the Zika virus was a huge concern so I wanted, you know, Zika virus, dengue, you know, like all the, you know, the Caribbean have these mosquitoes that carry these viruses. You, there's just no control over it. So you just want to do your part and you just want to choose the seasons where it's a little bit cooler weather. Um, so there's not so many mosquitoes out. And then you want to find out the time when uh, maybe in a city or town where a lot of your family's from school vacation when did the children have spring recess when did they have winter break or you know when are they out of school if you want to have a summer wedding the great thing about having a destination wedding is your guest list is very small <laughs> um a destination wedding is more a feel of very close friends and family um we had a pretty large destination wedding which i'm really surprised so we had a total of 57 guests total and then with Ontario and I, we made 59 uh, total. So that was more than I expected. I sent out um, 75 invitations and we got 57 people to come. So I was really uh, surprised and I was really grateful that that many people, you know, wanted to come to Puerto Rico and um, spend time with us on our day. I got a few questions through email um, and I wanted to see if I could answer some of them on this video. Um, so how was the weather overall the whole time you spent there? So the weather in Puerto Rico was beautiful the whole time we were there. 
up until the wedding day when it rained. But it was beautiful. It was in the 80s every single day and I loved it. One other recommendation that I would give you, they're like coming now to my head. If you're doing your own makeup, such as myself, I had a foundation color that matched my skin at that moment. So, you know, we got to Puerto Rico on a Wednesday, the wedding was until Sunday. So I knew in my head that I could not get any sun because if I got any sun and this face changed a shade darker, I would be in trouble because my foundation matched my skin tone at that moment. So I hid from that sun. So if you're having a destination wedding, you're gonna be there a couple days prior and you're doing your own makeup, you bring a floppy hat girl and you don't let that sun touch your face. If not, you're gonna have to go to the drugstore or go to Sephora and buy yourself a new foundation. So that's a tip that I would give you. If you're doing your own makeup, hide from that, hide from that hot Caribbean sun because that sun catches you like that. I mean, it's so hot. So wear that floppy hat and your sunglasses and you hide, go under the trees and hide in the shade. Don't let that sun touch you until the day you get married. And then afterwards, you can go bake. <laughs> I had a question about our bridal party. So I kept my bridal party very small. Uh, it was just my two sisters and Ontario's daughter. So that was it. Um, I kept it very small. And since I have two sisters, I didn't want to choose a maid of honor. So they were both my bridesmaids. And um, I wanted to be a little bit different. So their dresses were different, but the same style, the same color. But they, you know, their dresses were two different style dresses. Um, and we got our dresses from ASOS. My sisters got their dresses from ASOS.com and I think ASOS has great bridesmaids dresses that are affordable, they're stylish, they're young, they're youthful. And um, my sisters looked amazing, they looked gorgeous. Someone asked me how did I organize uh, my wedding planning and did I have a binder? So I bought one of those like wedding planning binders uh, when I first got engaged because I got really excited and I wanted one, but honestly, you guys, I didn't even use mine. Like, if somebody wants mine, send me an email and I'll just, I don't even think I ever wrote in that thing. Maybe like on the first page, but I just did it out of excitement, but I didn't really use it. I actually just put everything in Excel or I created a manila folders and as I started hiring vendors, I started labeling each manila folder and I was just keeping the contracts there. I was, and then when we would send a deposit, I would make a copy of our check uh, plus the receipt and I would put it in the folder and I was just, in my Excel spreadsheet, I just put in everyone's total, how much was the deposit and what was the remaining balance and we just kind of, finance from there we Ontario did a really good job in managing our money and um, just deciding like hey if we put this much in our savings account every two weeks we're gonna have this and then as the vendors were coming in we were already starting to add you know add the total amount and um, you know he did a really good job with uh, keeping track of our finances I just primarily focused on organizing everything and creating a due date so I created a calendar so I wanted to make sure that I had everyone's due date in my calendar so that I knew when each final payment was due. The person asked me how was it traveling with your dress? Um, number one your dress attracts a lot of attention so you're gonna get a lot of airport attention from other people and flight attendant attention and security attention when you're coming around with this big giant dress and everyone knows what's in there it's a wedding dress. Um, so get ready for that. Second, uh, the place that I bought my dress from, they really, I was, I think every place does this though. So they just really, really secured it in a really nice bag. So it was pretty good. And then a lot of times the airline either has like a closet that they could put your dress in or we flew Southwest. So they just let my dress have the entire overhead compartment all to itself. So no one was allowed to put their luggage in there. They really protected my dress. Other thing is decorations. So I had a lot of decorations, like my seating chart. I created it in the frame and everything. And I took the wedding guest favors, a lot of the decoration, the other decorations. I had to take it. So I just designated one entire luggage for all of our decoration. And everything was just properly bubble wrapped. We wrapped them in towels, especially the seating chart was wrapped in bubble wrap and wrapped in towels to keep everything really secure. So you just wanna make sure when you're packing everything, just make sure you pack it so everything stays tight, nothing is loose, nothing's gonna be rumbling around because you know how the airport is. They just throw your luggage just everywhere. So you just wanna make sure that everything is in there really tight. So towels, 
I would recommend a lot of towels and a lot of bubble wrap to keep everything um, from rattling around or moving around because you don't want anything to break. In terms of wedding guest favors, so this took me, I think, I think what took me the most planning in our wedding was ugh, just like little little details like that so the wedding guest favor was a big deal to me i really wanted to figure out how can i you know express my gratitude for people coming to our wedding so i went on etsy everything that i ordered was etsy honestly and i found this woman that makes uh leather luggage tags so i got them in a lot of neutral colors so black white and a really nice uh tan and uh, I will post pictures of the things that I'm talking about. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, so someone asked me um, about the music. And I think that was like the most second frustrating thing for me was choosing music. And it was basically music about what I was going to pick walking down the aisle, what I was going to what song to dance with my father. That was really hard. I, you know, I don't know why. I was so indecisive on that. So finally I chose um, the piano version of... a a thousand years from the twilight you know the twilight um movies and that was just so beautiful my father we danced to adele make you feel my love and yeah i danced to an oca de leon song with my dad called ayan we wanted to dance salsa and it was just it was so nice my dad is like an amazing salsa dancer so i just I just wanted him to have that moment to show off and dance and we had a really nice moment dancing together. So one great advice that I would give anyone having a destination wedding, especially in the Caribbean, is there's always going to be unforeseen circumstances that happen to you. It happened to me, you guys. Um, the forecast was not supposed to rain that day and the day before we had the rehearsal at the venue, it was warm and beautiful and sunny and not a cloud in sight. And then the next morning, the day of our wedding, it was sunny and beautiful. And right an hour before the ceremony was supposed to start, it rained. So what I did with my uh, florist and my coordinator and the, um, the wedding planner of the venue was that we made sure that about a month before the wedding, we talked about plan A and plan B. The venue had a plan B in case of, you know, in, in the case that it rains. And I talked to the florist and I made sure we communicated properly to each other. Like, hey, you know, if it rains, what is the decoration? What's the decor going to be like in the plan B section? And then the coordinator and I, you know, we planned out, the, you know, the week of the day before. Hey, if it rains, you know, like, you know, what do you want to do? Do we, you know, do we play it by ear? And we basically just played it by ear. So it rained and she came down in the bridal suite and she said hey it's raining i really think we're gonna have to use plan b and i said cool beans girl i'm totally gonna go by your recommendation because at that point i mean there's nothing you can control so keep that in mind that if you are interested in getting married in an outdoor setting in the caribbean in april <laughs> you're probably going to get rain but in the bright side a lot of people told me that rain is a blessing for your wedding so I guess our wedding was blessed because it rained all night long but you know what though although it rained it was the most fun spontaneous like freeing experience because we were literally just dancing in the rain all night long and we were just loving it and I just kept thinking when am I ever gonna say that I just danced in the rainforest in the rain like probably never again right so you just embrace it so you just embrace it and there's things that you're gonna forget there's things that you know like I forgot last minute like for example I, I printed and purchased table the table number signs so you know we go to Puerto Rico I get all my stuff out on the day before and I'm talking to the wedding coordinator and at that very moment I say oh my god I don't have the, I don't have a holder for my signs like how are they gonna hang how are they gonna sit on a table luckily that's the good thing about having a wedding coordinator she had she's like I got you don't worry about it I'm gonna take care of it and it was something that I forgot. And there's always gonna be unforeseen circumstances. You can do your best to avoid them, but sometimes it just happened. 
and um, just try to have backup but if you don't your vendors will usually always have your back or if not you just send your mom or your fiance on a crazy run at a store somewhere to try to find something that you forgot watching don't forget to subscribe so you can get uh, notifications on new videos and if you like this video don't forget to leave me some love and give me a thumbs up and thank you guys I love you guys congratulations to any of you any of you guys that are getting married or are engaged I wish you guys all luck and if you have any other questions about getting married destination or specifically Puerto Rico hit me up and I got you girl I got you I'll be your wedding coordinator for free girl well I'm not gonna be your full wedding coordinator but I'll, I'll be your girlfriend and help you out all right guys talk to you later Mwah. bye Thank you.